the multiverse of Magic the Gathering, following the epic crisis that was the War of the Spark, still has plenty of threats facing it outside of the Dragon Planeswalker Nicol Bolas. When one enemy falls, another rises, even if they've been dormant and unmentioned for several sets. Yet, there are lingering storylines which seem to be guiding us back to face one of the oldest threats in MTG. After War of the Spark, it looks like another war is gearing up on New Phyrexia. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sybin bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Now, I know a lot of you guys are super excited about the topic of Phyrexia and New Phyrexia, and I'm happy to bring it to you guys, but I want to share something that I'm super excited about as well, and that's that today's video is sponsored by MTGA Assistant, the new MTG Arena extension from EtherHub.com. You can download it from MTGAssistant.net or by clicking the link in the description below. I tried it out and I really enjoy it, and I really think you guys would enjoy it as well. I think it's a great tool to get you the most out of your enjoyment from your arena experience. So go ahead and check it out. And now let's move on to the lore. Today we'll be exploring the ancient story threat of the Phyrexians and how our current story looks to be returning to this race of mechanically infested monstrosities. At the end of War of the Spark, with that novel and its follow-up Forsaken, we learn of a new plan to free the plane once known as Mirrodin from the grasp of the Phyrexians. In today's video, let's learn about the heroes orchestrating this new Mirren resistance, the current state of New Phyrexia, and how the events of War of the Spark brought all of this into motion. Let's examine what the cards don't tell us about our return to New Phyrexia, and what exactly is happening with Karn, a Johnny Goldmane, and Tefiri. The threat of the Phyrexians is as old as MTG storytelling itself. They were at the center, the prime antagonists, for a lot of the early lore and became the first true interplanar threat we saw in the game. Back in their earliest history, they were created as a mechanical solution to a very human, very mortal problem. Yagmoth, the first father of machines, believed he could improve upon a flawed design by splicing it with aspects of artificy. His plan worked, but also drove him mad, believing he could perfect the multiverse with this new Phyrexian design. Thus, the Phyrexians were born, and their threats in the multiverse established. That initial threat was defeated, but the Phyrexians proved resilient even long after their father and machine died. The creeping infestation of Phyrexians' influence spread through a dark ichor known as Phyrexian or Glistening Oil. So even though the original Phyrexia was dead and gone, the plague was spreading through an unexpected source, the artificial planeswalker Karn. Karn was built initially with aspects of Phyrexian technology, and hidden in that tech was the heart of corruption, this glistening oil. As Karn traveled the multiverse, he unwittingly dropped this oil and spread the infection, infecting a number of planes he visited. The oil's effects on most of these worlds is still unknown, a well of untold stories that could come, but the highest dose of this glistening oil was dropped on Karn's own self-made artificial plane that would come to be known as Mirrodin. On Mirrodin, the effects of the glistening oil was on full, tragic display. We won't go into the full history of Mirrodin or the rise of New Phyrexia in this particular video, but the short version is that the oil drove some mechanical golems Karn left on this world insane. Chief among them, Memnark, coveted the planeswalker spark of his creator. Memnark sucked in biological life to Mirrodin from other worlds, creating a weird metal flesh world in which the glistening oil thrived. What we got was New Phyrexia, a race of metal and flesh hybrids who looked to continue their ancient mission to perfect the multiverse. This started with the still mostly biological life form stuck on Mirrodin, who now mount a resistance effort to free their world of this infection. Karn abandoned his world, helping the resistance as he could but ultimately proving more of a liability to Mirrodin than anything else. The rise of independent sects of Phyrexians, all led by different Praetors, meant this was a much different form of Phyrexia than the multiverse had ever seen before, and Karn was now focused on containing that threat, preventing their rise on other planes, and ensuring that the Praetors of New Phyrexia couldn't expand their rule throughout the multiverse. 
That is the abridged version of the Phyrexian threat and where it stands currently. Being stuck on New Phyrexia, previously known as Mirrodin, but with the ever looming threat that they could expand to other planes and devastate the multiverse at large. But what heroes will stand to face this ever-growing threat? From the War of the Spark and Forsaken novels, we learn that a new band of classic planeswalking characters look to be the front line of defense against the new Phyrexian threat. As you would expect, they are all characters who have deep connections and experiences with fighting Phyrexians. Of course, this includes Karn, who feels responsible for the rise of New Phyrexia. Their origins are deeply tied to his own internal makeup, and it is his world they currently infect. Tefiri is another character looking to stop this threat, as he was around during the Phyrexians' invasion of Dominaria. He fought with Urza, one of the greatest and well-known characters in MTG, against this threat. And finally, a Johnny Goldmane, the Leonin planeswalker whose connection to the Phyrexians is a little more muddied, but it comes from his relationship with another planeswalker who lost almost everything to their tyrannical rule. But what happened to these characters in the War of the Spark, and why is New Phyrexia their next destination? As we know, Karn has a lot of personal stakes involved with New Phyrexia. He contributed to its spread, they have decimated his home plane, and they also corrupted his very purpose and caused the sacrifice of a good man on Karn's behalf. During our first trip to Mirrodin and New Phyrexia, we found that the Praetors were worshipping a new father of machines, who turned out to be Karn. Karn's own glistening oil had corrupted him, and though he fought this corruption, it essentially put him in a weak, almost catatonic state. Still, Karn was seen as a symbol and a rallying point for the Phyrexians. His Planeswalker spark would return and his essence cleanse when the Planeswalker, Venzer, a friend, sacrificed his own spark and life to Karn. That sacrifice was a success. The Phyrexians lost their father of machines, and Karn was pissed. Though at this point, the Mirren Resistance, the last remaining uninfected biological life on Mirrodin, was pushed to its limit, on the verge of breaking apart. Mirrodin was, at this point, solely New Phyrexia. Karn had no other choice but to leave his world or risk falling again under the captor's influence. The Mirrens believed that the power vacuum left in Karn's absence would cause a power struggle between the Praetors, a civil war that could weaken the Phyrexian stranglehold over Mirrodin. This proved half true. There were some defectors amongst the Praetors, but a new father of machines was crowned and their efforts barely slowed for but a moment. Though this new father was actually a mother, the white Phyrexian Praetor, Elish Norn, became the de facto leader of the Phyrexians and led the push to completely perfect the rest of Mirrodin. Karn was now on a mission to destroy New Phyrexia at all costs, even if it meant destroying the world he created in the process. In that, he traveled to his original home, Dominaria, in search of an ancient artifact, the Silex. Karn knew of this device from his past with Urza, Karn's creator, who was forced to use it to end the Brothers' War, the first real fight against Phyrexianized forces. The Silex, when used, creates a powerful explosion and, essentially, turned to glass a large swath of Dominaria when Urza used it at the end of the Brothers' War. The blast was so powerful that it changed the climate of Dominaria itself, ushering in the Ice Age. Karn traveled back to Dominaria and retrieved the Silex with the intent of using it to end New Phyrexia, but in doing so, ran into the Gatewatch, who were looking to stop another multiversal threat, Nicol Bolas. Karn talked to Chandra Nalar and others of the Gatewatch and agreed that Bolas posed a more imminent threat than the Phyrexians, who were currently just stuck on their own plane. Putting aside his personal grudge, Karn agrees to travel with the group to stop Bolas on Ravnica, but also stops short of actually joining the Gatewatch himself, making it publicly known that he fully intends to deal with New Phyrexia after their war with Bolas, regardless of what other conflicts the Gatewatch would be pulled into. Karn's role in the War of the Spark was crucial in a number of different ways, being the most unique member on their side as an artificial planeswalker. Karn has untold years of experience dealing with massive plane-wide conflicts and powerful egotistical personalities, i.e. Urza. On the ground, the fight against the Dreadhorde was nothing new to Karn, who saw similar conflicts against the Phyrexians, further increasing his desire to right the wrongs committed on New Phyrexia. 
As an artificial life form, Karn was also able to mimic a device Ral Zarek had created that could sense the aura given off by planeswalkers. Using these planeswalking specs, Karn gave this ability to key members in their war to help in efforts of locating and mobilizing planeswalkers they've never met before in their fight against Bolas. In a very special mission, Karn was paired with Obnixilis, Samut, and Doc Faden to stop the never-ending flow of the Dreadhorde from entering into Ravnica, to turn off the tap of reinforcements Bolas was using in his war. To do this, Karn and the others ran through the Planar Bridge that was opened by the Planeswalker and Bolas lackey, Tezzeret, which brought them to the plain of Amonkhet, the home of the Eternals. There, the group fought back the flow of Eternals and Karn caused a malfunction in the Planar Bridge that Tezzeret was using, essentially closing off the portal and forcing Tezzeret's retreat. Karn then went back to Ravnica and witnessed the fall of Bolas. They had succeeded. Of course, this war wasn't fought by just this group of planeswalkers. Tefiri, who also met with the Gatewatch on Dominaria and agreed to help them with their war against Bolas, actually joined the Gatewatch in the process, and was also there, supporting efforts as well. Like Karn, Tefiri has his own troubling experiences with the Phyrexians, which helped him in the War of the Spark. When the Phyrexians were invading his home of Dominaria, he was but a pupil of Urza, but their ideas on how to combat the threat conflicted. Tefiri actually believed the Phyrexians to be too unstoppable, that what they should do is try to hide out and discourage an invasion rather than fight back directly, a cowardice move made out of love for his people. Clearly Urza disagreed, but Tefiri moved forward with a plan to phase his people out of the current time stream using his unique and powerful form of time magic. In phasing out his home continent, Tefiri protected his people but also removed powerful allies who were needed in the fight against the Phyrexians. Years later, Tefiri would return to the current timeline and find that the Phyrexians were defeated, causing loads of self-doubt in the Planeswalker that his move was a mistake, that his actions caused more innocents to die in replace of he and his people fighting with them. In seeing the plans of Bolas on Ravnica and the innocents dying there, the time for hiding was over. It was time to fight. Tefiri was a part of a group consisting of Jace, Jaya Ballard, and Vivian Reed, who were tasked with assassinating Liliana Vess, who at the time was coerced into leading the Dreadhorde by threat of Bolas. Still, without her necromatic dominance over the Eternals on the ground, the defense efforts would have a distinct advantage. Tefiri's role was to use his time magic on Liliana to slow her reaction and defenses against their assault. His magic worked perfectly, but Liliana had innate protections granted to her by the Chain Veil, and even Bolas himself came to her aid. Tefiri managed to save his entire group though, casting a slow time bubble around them as they fell from a building that had been toppled by Bolas. Though his mission technically failed, Tefiri was still invaluable in the fight against the Eternals, using his brand of magic to literally age them to dust in a matter of seconds. In another group, the Leonin Ajani Goldmane, who had joined the Gatewatch some time ago on the plane of Kaladash, was working alongside Huatli, Jiang Yang Gu, and Mu Yang Ling. While Ajani had no direct experience with the Phyrexians, he did learn of their devastating and horrifying effects from his friend, Elspeth Terrell, who had lived on a plane conquered by the Phyrexians. Elspeth lived through their torture, a wound Ajani was well aware of, and while Elspeth was dead at this point on the plane of Theros, Ajani took up her mantle, literally wearing Elspeth's cloak to help others in her stead. With this, Ajani fought against the tyranny of Bolas by helping rescue the citizens and stray planeswalkers of Ravnica. He used his healing magic to save lives, while he and the rest of the group ushered the innocent into the undercity tunnels of the Golgari, away from the Dreadhorde army. Ajani also used his signature brand of inspirational and morale-boosting magic, essentially being the rallying cry for the planeswalkers in the war, encouraging bravery and spurring on the will to fight. In the fight against the Eternals, Ajani used a trick he actually used when he fought and defeated Bolas in their first encounter on Alara. He summoned spiritual avatars of his Leonin friends from Alara and Theros to fight the Dreadhorde back, just as he had summoned an avatar of Bolas to defeat the dragon so many years ago. 
Working together, these three, along with all the other planeswalkers, were able to defeat Nicol Bolas, but it was thanks in part to the sacrifices of Gideon Jura that cemented the dragon's downfall. With a heavy heart, the members of the Gatewatch, along with Karn and others, ventured to Gideon's home of Theros for a memorial service, laying his armor to rest. It was here on Theros that Ajani and Tefiri heard of Karn and his mission to blow up New Phyrexia. The name Phyrexia cut a deep chord with both Tefiri and Ajani, who both had personal reasons to hate anything Phyrexian. Karn described more about his world of Mirrodin and the rise of this new Phyrexia, and how it was so different compared to those known by Tefiri or Ajani. But it was still Phyrexia all the same, a threat they know well, and understood the consequences should they ever leave Mirrodin to other planes. Tefiri arranged a meeting between the three planeswalkers at his home on Dominaria, where they gathered to discuss possible strategies against New Phyrexia. Karn initially wanted to leave right away to scout New Phyrexia, looking for the best place to set off the Silex and wipe the plane clean. However, Tefiri convinced Karn to rethink his strategy, probing the capabilities of the Silex and if it would actually work in the complete downfall of the Phyrexians. The ultimate result of this meeting is unclear, but what is clear is that Ajani, Tefiri, and Karn are all working together on a plan to visit New Phyrexia and end this threat once and for all. From a mission Karn believed was his sole duty, out of the War of the Spark, he found new allies to help in his campaign. Along with Tefiri and Ajani, there are other planeswalkers in play who could be a part of a new Phyrexia set. Of course, that doesn't mean there's other possible candidates as well, namely Koth and Elspeth Terrell. Ajani doesn't know yet, but in Theros Beyond Death, Elspeth, his friend, has escaped the underworld of Theros and still has a major bone to pick with new Phyrexia. Ajani would be the perfect tie-in for Elspeth to join this new defense effort. Koth, on the other hand, was one of the quote-unquote natives of Meriden, and the quotes are there because no life is technically really native to the plane. He's a planeswalker who fiercely fights for Meriden and is the leader of the Mirren Resistance, though his current fate is suspect, with many believing that he has since died in Meriden's fall. There is hope his spark is still out there fighting the good fight, though. The last planeswalker who could be in play is Tezzeret. He spent some time on New Phyrexia, witnessing the rise of Elish Norn as the Mother of Machines. It's not revealed what this information was used for, but perhaps we'll learn more once we return to New Phyrexia. Now, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't also mention the most recent character to be involved with the Phyrexian threat, the mysterious nightmare mage Ashiok. As this character developed through the story of Theros Beyond Death, they learned of the Phyrexians from the torturous memories of Elspeth Terrell. In seeing these living nightmares in action and how much agony they have caused, Ashiok went out to learn more about the Phyrexians. Now, we can assume that they're seeking them out on New Phyrexia, yet we don't know anything about Ashiok's plan from that point, but I'm sure it's something really scary. We don't know what will happen when we set our sights on New Phyrexia, but we do now have our potential cast of characters, with Tefiri, Karn, and Ajani surely setting themselves up for this story after War of the Spark. If you enjoyed this video guys, make sure you show support for the channel by leaving us a like, subscribing to the channel, and of course taking that notification bell so you never miss out on a new video. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!